Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So uh, I want to go through today pretty much how to compute anything ever. <laughs> so today's topic is the absolutely amazing uh, technique called Newton's method. So as a prerequisite, you will need a little bit of calculus, uh, really basic stuff, just first year calculus. Yeah, just so long as you understand what a derivative is, I think you'd be right as rain. <laughs> okay, so something else before we start, I actually made a merchandise shelf, so you can get official Creel merchandise if you'd like to support the channel. Yeah, you should see that just down below uh, this video. All right, cheers. Okay, so today we're talking about Newton's method. Uh, it's a method for calculating expressions, but uh, what is it exactly? Uh, well, Newton's method is an iterative uh, root finding technique. So if you've got yourself a mathematical expression, say something like um, x squared minus 5 equals 0, uh, because you've got equals 0 over there, uh, what you're looking for is, is the root of the expression x squared minus 5. Yeah, so Newton's method is a technique for finding the value that you would have to set x to uh, in order that you would come out with the answer zero. Yeah, it finds the root for the expression x squared minus five. Well, the more times you apply Newton's method, uh, you'll get a closer and closer approximation to the real answer. Uh, so what we do, we begin with a guess. Uh, I might just demonstrate this, I think. So let's say that we're trying to find out um, Let's say that our expression is x times x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so we're looking for the root or the 0 of the function x squared minus 5. Okay, so that's what we're looking for just there. Let's see what we do. So with Newton's method, we start with an initial guess uh, as to what the answer might be. So if we look at this a little bit, we could say that if x was 2, then x squared would be 4 and x squared minus 5 would be negative 1. So it's somewhere around 2. Uh, if we set our initial guess, g, to 2, uh, I'm using C++ here, but you could pretty much use this in uh, any language, really. It doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, so g equals 2, g for our guess. Now, so Newton's method is iterative. We're going to iterate something. We're going to do it 10 times in this example. Okay, so what do we iterate? Well, Newton's method itself is really, really simple. We take our original function, so x squared minus 5. Uh, we substitute in our guess. So it's going to be g times g minus 5, or g squared minus 5. And we divide that function by its derivative. Yeah, so the derivative of g squared is uh, 2g. And what you do is you subtract that, the quotient there, from your uh, guess. And every time you do that, you'll get a closer and closer approximation. So our initial guess was 2. If we do this little step just here, we divide this function by its derivative and we subtract it from our guess, we'll get a closer approximation such that if we do this 10 times like we are here, uh, if we STDC out this bad boy and see what he's got, uh, I'll just say, like, what have you? Then we'll say G and STD and all. What have you? Let's see. Let's see what comes out. A number, 2.23607. But what's interesting about that number, if I can find my... So that number just there is actually the solution to the equation. X times X minus 5 equals 0. So if I just plug that into my calculator, 2.2... Uh, 3607. That squared minus 5 gives you 0. Let's say as a second example, what we want to do is find the square root of 10. Okay, so what we're looking for is the square root of 10 equals x. So you'll see in this particular example just here, we don't have something, something, something equals 0. So when you're doing Newton's method, you need to have that equals 0. Newton's method is a root finding uh, technique. So if you're not looking for equals zero, then you're not finding the root. Newton's not going to help you. Okay, but so what we can do is use a little bit of algebra to rearrange this a little bit. So we could say if the square root of 10 equals x, uh, what we're also saying is that uh, 10 equals x times x, pretty much. And if 10 equals x times x, then what we're saying is that x times x minus 10 equals zero. 
So you see, sometimes you need to use a little bit of algebra in order to get that equal zero over there. But what you'll see now is that we've got something pretty much the same as before. So if we're looking for the square root of a number, say n, then the Newton uh, approach or, or using Newton's method will pretty much be the same thing every time. So if the number that we're looking for the square root of is not five, if it's 10, then all we would have to do is change that yeah, to 10. Could even make it a, a variable up here, like v equals 10. Yeah, so we've got ourselves just there, a really quick and easy way using Newton's method to find square roots. If we just run this, we should get three point something. Yeah, 3.16228, the square root of 10. Okay, but if you're looking for square roots or if you're doing polynomials with a second degree, you could just use the quadratic uh, formula. Yeah, there's a formula for that. So we wouldn't need to use Newton's method for that. Let's say we've got another expression, something slightly more complicated. Let's say that x to the power of 4 equals 78. Well, this is a little bit more complicated, but Newton's method is not going to have any trouble at all with this sort of thing. So polynomials is something that Newton's method does absolutely fantastically. So, so some number to the power of 4 equals 78. The first thing that we've got to do in order to use Newton's method is get that 78 over the uh, left-hand side and get a zero over the right-hand side. So it's going to be x to the power of 4 minus 78 equals zero. Okay, if x to the power of 4 minus 78 equals 0, we can certainly Newton with that. Let's just take a bit of a guess. Some number to the power of 4 equals 78. I don't even know. It's going to be 3 or thereabouts. Okay, for int i equals 0, while well, i is less than 10, i plus plus. Uh, these 10s just here, I might come back to that at the end. That's the number of iterations that we're performing. So, um, okay, so the top expression is going to be this one, x to the 4, so uh, g times g times g times g minus 78. And the bottom expression, or the derivative of that function, is uh, 4 times g times g times g. Yeah, and then we'll subtract our guess each iteration. We'll see what we get. Yeah, would you look at that? So the Quartic root, or the fourth root of the number 78, is around about 2.97183. So Newton's method can compute things that are generally quite difficult to compute. I mean, figuring out the uh, fourth root of 78 is, I mean, it's not, it's not really that difficult, but it's still, you know, it's more difficult than the uh, quadratic function. So for the next example, what we're going to do is try and compute x, but our function is 3x squared minus the sine of x equals 13. So once again, uh, what we need in order to use Newton's method, we need to have something, something, something equals zero. Yeah, it's a root finding method. So what we might do is just grab this 13 and put it over the other side. So the function becomes 3x squared minus gx, sorry, minus the sine of x uh, minus 13 equals zero. Now, if you had to figure out uh, what is a value for x where that function comes out as uh, zero, uh, it's not algebraic. As soon as you've got um, trigonometric functions, then you're dealing with pi. Uh, that's transcendental. There's no way to algebra pi. So in order to discover what the answer to this function is, we can just use Newton. Uh, you can't use algebra. It's not going to help you. I mean, you can switch signs and cos around and divide this, that, and the other, but you'll never actually get to the answer. It's interesting, too, that something like this function might not have a, a rational answer. So often when we're doing these things, we're not looking for the actual answer because it could be irrational. You know, it might go on for forever and ever. Uh, what we're often doing is uh, is just looking for an approximation to the answer, something that we can use in, uh, in computer science or engineering or whatever. Uh, you're often just looking for the first 10 say decimal digits or something like that. 3x squared minus the sine of x minus 13 equals zero. And now we've got to figure out the derivative of that. So the derivative of that is not terribly difficult. It's a little bit more involved than before, but it comes out as 6x minus the cosine of x. Okay, so if we have a bit of a look here at the code from example three, we set our guess g to one. I don't know why I return g down there. What we should do is print it out. So. Okay, so once again, we take our, our top uh, function just here and we divide it by its own derivative using g, our guess, as a bit of a substitute for x. And if we iterate that a whole bunch of times, I'm doing 100 iterations just here, 
then every time we iterate, we should get a closer and closer guess to the real answer. So let's just run this and see what happens. Well, there you go, 2.14772. Uh, our original function was uh, 3x squared minus the sine of x equals 13. So Newton's method is telling us that if x is 2.14772, that works out as true. I mean, that's not a lot of code to figure out something that's arguably uh, quite complex. Let's plug it in and see what happens. 2.14772. Would you look at that? 12.9999999. Yeah, so it's pretty much dead on. Uh, I will say also that you have to be careful sometimes of the rounding. So we're actually using a, a computer just here, and computers are finite inherently. Uh, there's always going to be rounding issues. And if your function is not well behaved at the root, so if your function is going up and down fairly wildly right near the root, uh, sometimes Newton's method uh, will sort of not converge uh, very quickly. Uh, I will say that that's more a problem with the accuracy of the tools that you're using, more so than Newton's method actually failing. I think if you had something that was infinitely accurate, uh, Newton's method would still work even with uh, functions that aren't well behaved near the root. Uh, okay, so moving right along, I've got another example here, and this one's slightly more complicated again, but just goes to show how uh, applicable and powerful this method is. Um, so we've got the cosine of 7x cubed minus 2x equals 0. Now, if you were asked just outright to discover what the value of x is such that this equation comes out as true, uh, that's not an easy thing to do. It's really not. Uh, but with Newton's method, it's trivial. It's easy as. So what do we do? Well, we set our guess. I've used Q for some reason. I might just rename that, actually. We'll rename that because uh, Q's no good. I'll rename it as G. Yeah, apply, dude. Well, I wasn't joking. <laughs> um, okay, so the, the function is the cosine of 7 uh, x cubed minus 2x. So that's the top bit of our little division just there. And the bottom bit is the um, derivative of that. So in order to get the derivative of that, you do need to use the chain rule um, because this is a function acting on a function. Yeah, so I've used the chain rule down there. But it's it's still like it's fairly basic calculus. I mean, this is all pretty much first year calculus. You learn the chain rule and the quotient rule and all that sort of stuff. And using this basic calculus, you can pretty much compute the answer to any single variable um, expression, really. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable. Okay, so we divide this function just here by its derivative, and we repeat that a hundred times, subtracting uh, that from our little guess here. And wouldn't you know it, we're going to come out with the answer. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, so the answer, what you would have to set x to in order that that expression comes out as zero, you would have to set x to about 0 0.984602. I mean, if you had to figure that out with a pen and paper, I can't even imagine how you would do it. Um, just the uh, last bit just here, this is um, this FF line. I don't know why I used FF, but this is what happens if you actually plug that final answer into the original expression. So the answer there is um, 0 0.000000, you know, 15 zeros in a row. That's how close it is to true zero. Uh, I think it's absolutely amazing. And the other thing to note about that is that Newton's method would have given us, I, I think like a Google correct digits. It would have given us thousands and thousands of correct digits. Um, the problem with this, the reason why we're not actually reaching zero isn't Newton's method. Uh, the problem is just the precision of double precision floating point numbers. Uh, so a couple of little things before we before we finish. So Newton's method has what's called quadratic convergence. Generally speaking, uh, it's quadratic, which means that uh, you'll roughly double your accuracy each time you iterate through Newton's method. Yeah. So if you've got two accurate digits in your guess, if you iterate through one Newton, then you'll have four accurate digits, approximately. Uh, if you iterate again, you'll have eight digits then 16. Yeah, so the accuracy is uh, is really very, very fast. Quadratic convergence is, you know, it's good. Uh, so the other thing is that Newton's method is actually just uh, the first or the simplest in a family of root finding techniques. And collectively, they're called uh, householders techniques. Uh, there's another one called uh, Haley's method, which is the second. And then the others, I think, are just numbered. So 
you know, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth of Householder's methods. The further and further, so, so Newton's method converges quadratically, uh, Halley's method converges cubically, so it's even faster. The trouble is that they're, they're more difficult to compute, so the speed of convergence actually comes at quite a, quite a complexity cost. You need the derivatives uh, equal to the number that you're uh, kind of at. So for Halley's method, uh, it's the second. So you need the first derivative and you need the second derivative of your function in order to use Halley's method. So for the fifth generation uh, householder's method, uh, it would converge really, really fast. I mean, <laughs> really fast. Uh, but you would need the fifth derivative of your function. Uh, you'd also need the fourth derivative and the third and the first and the second. And the second and the first, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so you can converge quicker using these uh, other uh, generations of householders methods, but the uh, complexity in implementing these things and the speed that they run at is, uh, is not necessarily, uh, it's not necessarily worth it all the time. Uh, but I will say that Newton's method is absolutely excellent because it's so, so simple. I mean, you only need the, the first derivative of a function and you can pretty much do it. Uh, Halley's method is excellent as well. You only need the first and second derivative. Uh, maybe even the householders uh, three and four uh, generations are often quite practical to use. The convergence is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, you can quite easily double the convergence of, of Newton's method, which is already astonishing. Uh, so there's there's other more complicated methods for finding roots to multivariable uh, expressions and things like that. Yeah, Newton's method as generally applied is only for single variable. And the other thing that I want to say is that it only works for uh, objects that are continuous. So things like real numbers or um, complex numbers, yeah, anything that's, uh, that's continuous, it will work for. Uh, but if you look at something like uh, Boolean algebra, it's not going to work. Uh, or even integer expressions. Yeah, so if you've got like, uh, what do they call them? Diophantine equations and things like that. Uh, it doesn't tend to help you very much. Um, you can use Newton's method to find, say, the square root of, of an integer. Yeah, it will generally help with simple things, but... Uh, more often than not, you need your objects to be uh, completely continuous, like the real number line. Yeah, so I think that's all that I wanted to say. Newton's method, dudes, get into it, mates. It's absolutely unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Good times. Yeah, and I guess that's just about it. So uh, thank you very much for watching and have a good day. <laughs>